Hey, it's your host, your girl Eva K, and I am here with the lovely Sheena Ford. Sheena Ford. Uh, look, girl, let me get out all my shout outs because we got a lot to talk about. I'm so happy you're here. Yay, I'm happy to be here. So, today, your video was sponsored by Miss Bianca Evans, another hairstylist in the city. She's a kid braider. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Miyaka. Thank you, girl. Mm -hmm. Queen supporting queens. I love that. My merch is Woman of My Hustle, which came from Mr. Nick Fletcher. He has a whole brand, Woman of My Hustle, Men of My Hustle. I'm going to drop everybody links in the description box below. Thank y'all so much for being friends of the show and sponsoring and supporting. You got any shout outs, girl? Shout out to all my supporters, my clients, my loyal clients, especially, um, you know, and just anybody who wants to support that doesn't know me. Hey, but we're about to get to know you today. <laughs> we're going to build that business. You already have a large following, a big brand. We're going to get into that. So let's bow our heads, say our grace, and let's get it in you. Now we thank you. Now we thank you for our food, for our food. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we thank you. Amen. 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 Sorry. So, I mean, I didn't. I wasn't expecting. This food right here. Farming crab. We got some snow crab, some shrimp, some potatoes, some corn, sausage. You eat pork? Um, I don't think they pork sausage though. You know what? I'm going to just stick with the crab. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pinky, tell us about you. Who is Mr. Shana Poe? So, some people know me as Pinky. Some people know me as Shana Ford. Um I'm from Chicago. Um, whoop, whoop. I moved to Knoxville when I was about... 11-12, um, I stayed here until I graduated from high school. I went to, when I, I graduated from Austin East, BB. Hello, 2800 May, baby. And um, I went to TSU for a couple years, and I knew my passion wasn't in, I'm not going to say school or college but I knew I wanted to do hair so mm -hmm. um I stopped going to hair I mean I stopped going to TSU I quit TSU and started going to hair school it was a 10-month program I finished it eight months and I became a hairstylist mm -hmm. um so I lived in Nashville for a total of four years after I graduated from hair school I moved to Atlanta and I started going hair there. Um, after that, I... Did you do any celebrity hair? Yeah, I've done a couple of celebrities hair. Um, I've did, I did Lloyd hair for a long time. Um, I had August Alcina's DJ. I actually did, I don't know how to pronounce her name. It's Marsha Ambrose. Am oh, from Floor Tree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I've done her hair before. I did her mom hair. So I had a couple of, um, you know, celebrity clients that I've dealt with for a while. And, you know, my journey has been awesome with that. Um, Since you've been doing hair, you've been doing hair in a few cities, where do you think is, like, your favorite city to do hair? My favorite? Actually, I'm going to go in and talking about my clientele and where I feel like my biggest clientele has been. Mm -hmm. Because when I moved to Atlanta, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to move to Atlanta. Like, it's going to be a million people. Like, I'm going to be so big. But I feel like when I moved to Atlanta, it was like I was a, a small fish in a big pond. Mm -hmm. So, it wasn't what I expected. And I had, like, a lot of dead ends. I feel like in Nashville was really good because I went to hair school in Nashville, so that's where I started. So I started here in school, so people know I do it here, here. But I feel like when I came back to Knoxville, I feel like this has been like my biggest clientele. Wow. Honestly, 
Like, mm -hmm. I feel like, and it's not even that I've promoted as much and I was just like, oh yeah, I'm doing this and this and that. I feel like it was definitely like off word of mouth. I had, I have so many clients that give me referrals that I'm like, I'm like, okay, at one point I'm like, look, I'm I'm not taking any new clients. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I have to take, like, I have so much, I have so many clients and then I'm still, I'm still a mom at the end of the day. So I don't mm. want to overwork myself. Shout out to Lil Rain. Yes. But yeah, so I feel like Knoxville has really been good to me since I've been back in this last past year. But you know what's crazy about that? People think that when you go to Atlanta, like you said, you're just going to have all this from nowhere, you just gonna appear from nowhere and have all this clientele. But you saying in your well, you from Chicago, but we're gonna say you from Knoxville because we all know you yeah. and love you. But this is where you booming it. Yeah, I'm definitely booming. And and it's it's crazy because I haven't like, you know, just posted as much and and I feel like the, my clients have been so loyal and so supportive that my clients my new clients come from my my loyal clients, if mm, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely been booming here, and um, I I see a lot of people too, like oh, I just want to go to Atlanta, and you know I'm ready to do this, and it's just like it's not that easy in Atlanta. Like people feel like you have to have a big name, mm. you have to, you know, they're really picky. It's not it's not the same as Knoxville, and it's like it's different. It's a whole different environment. Like, everybody is somebody in Atlanta or want to be somebody. So, it's definitely different. And it's, I'm not going to say it's hard, but you definitely have to know somebody or know people. So, know? that brings the true meaning of it ain't what you know, it's who you know. Exactly. For sure, in Atlanta. Like, for sure. So, what advice could you give, like, a little young, you know, a young girl that's, her dream is to move to Atlanta? Because a lot of people, you know, they talk bad about Knoxville. But I love our city. I love it. Yeah, I feel like Knoxville is a good city to, especially to build build whatever you have. Build whatever you want. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to build something, this is a good place to build and stay focused. And Atlanta is a lot of distraction. <laughs> Atlanta is the party city. Okay. It's literally something to do 24 hours, seven days a week. It's something to do, and you can definitely get lost in that party life, especially if you're not used to that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel like any young artist, wh whatever you're doing, if you want to move to Atlanta, you definitely have to stay focused. You definitely have to network. Networking is really big. Mm -hmm. Getting to know people, putting yourself out there, and working hard, and people are really picky, so you need to practice your craft and make sure that you on point because... People don't play about that. Like that. <laughs> Especially they her. Exactly. Like you doing hair. Have you ever had somebody like try to run up on you or not want to pay you? <laughs> Lord, and some of these people are like super, feel like, feel like that they owe you something. I mean, that you owe them something. Mm. Like, oh, I don't want to pay because I'm this person. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yes. That's how I feel like people are, people are bougie. They are bougie in Atlanta. Like, cause just because you got a name, like, you ain't got to pay for your hair. Where yeah, would you do this at? They like, yeah, and it's just like, okay, well, I'll give you clout. I'll give you, you going to get, because I had a lot of run, because like I used to work at a studio where like, you know, they did videos and stuff. So I would do the girls hair. So they was like, oh, you'll get exposure for this. It's like, I don't want exposure. I want the money. You know what I'm saying? Because even, <laughs> if, even if you feel like you're going to post me or whatever, like, it's not a lot of. It's not a lot of clients coming from that, honestly. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and now, and I get it sometimes with word of mouth, but it's just like these people are not really telling people that. Oh yeah, you need to go to her. You need to go to her. They just trying to get a quick care do for whatever they doing right now. So the, of course they'll post you, and then I feel like that's not where a lot of clientele comes from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because people like I see like even makeup artists now are trying to like push for the person who they done style to even give them shout outs. Like that was a whole debate that these people are getting their makeup done and they might mention, oh, I got on Balenciaga or I got on this, but they're not saying who did their hair and their makeup. Exactly. And, so, and it's like, if they do, it's a small little, they might've posted on their story for 24 hours. You know, mm -hmm. like, and that's kind of just how the market is going right now. Okay. And like, and I feel like a lot of people isn't wanting to do that. So I feel like 
networking is really big because you really have to build a relationship with these people. You really have to like be consistent in doing their makeup and building a relationship with them and not just doing it and be like, okay, well, can you post me and begging them to post you because it's not it's not you give me the money at the end of exactly. the day exactly like i want so. my money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what hairstyles do you specialize in so i special i my i specialize in i do natural hair and i do braids and i do wigs but my favorite thing to do is natural hair i love doing natural hair and because I feel like I want to take care of your real hair. Because you can get this wig and you can look flawless, but you still want to protect your hair. And then eventually, like, your real hair going to look like this wig. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Clipping your ends, making sure it's deconditioning, doing steam treatments like that. I want to take care of your real hair. You know? So, so my I would feel like my specialty is like mm -hmm. So, but are you one of those stylists? Because, of course, I'm bald-headed. I ain't, and before that, I had locks for five years, so I don't even remember going to the hairdresser. But are you one of those stylists that I be seeing on Facebook, like, come wash, blow dry, straighten? No. Why is that? I feel like, I feel like if I'm doing braids, I want you to come wash. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing, like, knotless braids or something like that, because I feel like that's like a five-hour process, you know, and... If you can come wash already, that'll kind of, you know, just help me out. But I'm not against it. Like, if you can't, if you can't wash your hair or, you know, but like when I'm doing a natural style, I, I need to do that because I need to make sure that it's up to par. Like, if I'm doing a silk press, I need to make sure that you washed it correctly. And I'm not saying like with braids that it doesn't matter. But it's like it's I'm put, I'm gonna put oils and all this stuff on your hair and it's gonna sure it's correctly clean because I'm putting heat on your hair. If I'm putting doing braids, it doesn't matter. If you know what I'm saying, if if there's oil on your hair or not, because I'm not putting heat on it. So that's the difference between come and wash and not come and wash. But I'm not one of them stylists like, oh you gotta wash your own hair unless I'm just doing like knowledge braids, which is like a five to seven hour process. Gotcha. So what, doing natural hair, you know, what sets you apart as a hairstylist? Like, do you make your own oils and stuff? Like, what sets So you I do make my own oils, and they're natural, and and I feel like that's what sets me aside, because I feel like I really care about your natural hair. Like, I'm not just going to throw something in your hair just for the money. Like, I actually care about doing hair. Like, I love natural hair, and I love taking care of people's hair. Because everybody wants their natural hair to be... Because if you can't get your hair done, you still have to wear your natural hair. Of course, yeah. You know? So I feel like that's one of my specialties because that's what I love doing. I love taking care of your hair. And I feel like that's what every stylist needs to do. Like, even if you're doing my makeup, like, I want to make sure you put in stuff on my skin that's going to make sure my skin is still, mm -hmm. you know. So it don't be out of Exactly. Pack me and bumps. And exactly. Like, I want you to still take care of my skin. Like, I don't want you to just do this for the money. You know? Now, do you do your own makeup? I do do my own makeup. Because you look flawless. Thank you. Especially your eyebrows. Thank you. Goodness gracious. When you come yeah, to I her, come to her and makeup, girl, that's like somebody speaking German to me. <laughs> I cannot figure it out. So, are you still doing your motivational stuff? Because I was following you. I still follow you. So, I feel like I do it, like, one-on-one -on -one now instead of, like, trying to... That's dope. <laughs> you know, dope. like, I feel like with my clients, I feel like I have a good relationship with my clients because I am super personal with them. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm your therapist. You know, so I feel like that's where it comes in now. And it's just, like, I I used to... I had made, made a market out of it because I was just, like, I want to focus on that and doing hair, but then it became, like, a bit much. Because you no. take home other people's spirits exactly. and energies and all of that. Exactly. All their so, problems. So now it's just like, it's not like I'm doing it for everybody or just being like, oh, yeah, I'm a mother. It's just like if my client comes to me and she got a problem, then, you know, I'm going to give you great advice. I'm going to motivate you. But everybody don't want it. You know what I'm saying? And then sometimes you can kind of get, like, backlash from it, mm. especially if you're not personable with a person because the people like, oh, you you trying to motivate people, but but you this or you do this and you do that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. then it becomes like judgmental, and it's just like so I kind of like 
got away from it a little bit, which I, I'm still the same person, but it was kind of like messing with me a little bit because it was like people was like kind of judging me for it. Like, oh, well, how are you trying to motivate somebody and you, you this and you doing that? And your life not right. Exactly. And your life not right. So it's yeah. just like, you know. I done got that before. Exactly. So it's like, I want to help people that want to be helped. So mm-hmm. if you come to me and you need help, then I'll help you. Got you. Me and my homegirl, she's a makeup artist, Kashana. We got into a big debate because she said when she go to the hair salon, she go to talk and pretty much have a therapist. Like her hairstylist, that's her therapist. That's who she talks to. And I said, well, I don't agree. Because I have been to like different hairstyles. I used to like go get my, you know, go get my hair done at the Africans or try out different people to do my locks. And I don't think they ever talked to me. Like we didn't talk. I couldn't even tell you half of their names when I left out of there. Really? Yeah, it's just like a place to say walk, taking walk-ins. I go sit in a chair. Why am I going to tell you my life? So like, I feel like with my clients, like I'll like if when you sit in my chair, like oh, you know, I'll be, you know, I'll talk to you, like oh, how was your day doing? And I feel like I'll I can pick up the vibe, like if you want to talk or not. Mm-hmm. So if I feel like you don't want to talk, then I'm gonna put on a movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> because. You know, I don't, I don't want to like, force it, but it's like some, a lot of my clients come to me and I, and I know their whole life story and what they're going through and, and, you know. Yeah, that's what she said. I mean, I've been going to North Dallas for six years, so we're friends. I'm like, I wish I had that kind of relationship with a stylist, but and I don't. But I feel like that's too, like, where it come with being a people person. And that's why I was like, I love my clients because we have a personal relationship. Mm-hmm. And that's why they keep coming back. And that's why they recommend me because of who I am. But I feel like I'm, I'm, I am I'm think like I'm real and I'm wrong with you. Like, you tell me some stuff, I'm going to tell, I ain't going to be like, oh girl, you, you know, like sugarcoat nothing. Like, no, you, they did what? Oh no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I feel like at the end of the day, that's, that's building up you are how can I say this? Hold on. I feel like with your clients, you should definitely try to build a relationship with them because I feel like that's what keeps them coming back. Because sometimes somebody cannot even like their hair and they'll still come back because they feel like they you know no, of course I want you to tell me, but like how many times you've been to establish if you ain't if you don't like your hair, you be like, I ain't never going back I'm to never her. Never going back. And then you gonna you gonna go tell everybody, Oh yeah, she messed up my hair. But if you got a good stylist and you got a relationship with them, you're gonna be like you're gonna go back and be like, Well, I didn't really like this. Like, you know, I'm gonna I would you just take that chance. though. Somebody was like, You done spent six hours doing somebody's hair and they just like mm mm, just on you. And it's like, I would rather them tell me. <laughs> I would rather them tell me than to go tell the whole world. You know, because I done, gotcha. I done had clients like that. I'd be like, you like your hair? And they'd be like, oh, yeah. And then they'll leave. And then they'll be like, oh, I didn't really like it. And this and this and that. I would rather I would rather take the backlash than you go tell everybody else. Because where the math is how you run Exactly. And I feel like gotcha. bad words travel way faster than good words. Like a million people can be like, oh yeah, I like it. But as soon as one person be like, oh yeah, she, I ain't like my hair. She did this. Like it's going to travel way faster. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. So what's next for you? Um, so some big stuff coming up. Um, I'm going to post about it, um, starting June 21st. Um, we have like, I have all this promo and stuff that I'm working on right now. Mm-hmm. So if you follow me at Sheena, at, at Sheena Ford, S-H-E-N-A-F-O-R-D or shop Sheena Ford, um, I'm definitely going to be posting some, a new product that I'm working on, but definitely, um, new products new products i'm working on. i've found a new formula found some new because you know what i was i'm i'm still selling my hair oils but doing coronavirus it's been a lot of like um out of stock like oh mm-hmm. you know with different just big companies like okay where i get my oils from or where i get my containers from and stuff it's just been like oh we're you know we're we're low on this and so like i feel like coronavirus really started um Kind of hindering like my products or whatever mm-hmm. so i just kind of put a pause on it um so yeah so definitely um but i found a way to work around it and so that's a little bit of what's going to be the new announcement when i drop on um 
June 21st. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Let me ask you, since you brought up coronavirus, you're in the beauty industry. Mm-hmm. So y'all never stop. I feel like... I feel like... I was supposed to stop, but I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, cause like I, a lot of the beauty beauty shops and stuff had to shut down. So I'm like, look, I can pull up on you. <laughs> you know, so like, because it's like I still, and you know, you still need your hair done. I still need my money <laughs> at the end of the day. So it was just kind of like, Facts. you know, it was like kind of one of them situations. But yeah, I feel like definitely coronavirus slowed down. A lot of stuff and i'm just so happy that we're like back and open and you know getting back to running get back to a new normal yeah because i don't know if it'll ever go back normal yeah so yeah because like even though we have like now like the mass mandate is like dropped and stuff like that it's still like some people like I don't know. I ain't taking that mask off. Exactly. Like, I don't know what y'all was talking about. But, my you sister. know, it's like... <laughs> she was like, I'm going to wear it the rest of my life. <laughs> There's a lot of people who are still super cautious, which is which is not a bad thing mm-hmm. at all. I mean, I'm vaccinated. Did you get vaccinated? No. You're against it? A lot of black people are against it. I work in the school system, so... It was like, these kids coming in here with all different kind of stuff. I got to protect myself against all this. Well... I'm I'm a firm believer in like holistic healing. So like okay. you know, so I feel like if you 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 eat in the right things and you have a good immune system, like you're gonna be fine. But I never got like the flu shot or anything either. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm into like, you know, like taking sea moss and taking, you know, different type of herbs to like help boost your immune system. Mm-hmm. And so like I'm I'm all about the natural. So it's just like I don't even like taking medicine when I'm like like if I have a headache, I don't want to take Tylenol. So I'm one of them. So it's just like Do you help people? Cuz I know a lot of people you could get messed up if you don't use the right kind of herb combinations and stuff. So is your holistic approach something that you'll be willing to help people with or Yeah, I will. And I feel like every like it's it's on your blood type. Like, it's about your blood type. And a lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, like, let's just say, like, okay, so I went vegan. Well, not vegan. I went vegetarian for, like, four months. Mm -hmm. And I lost a lot of weight. And I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing. But vegetarian is not for everybody. Like, you need to know your blood type. You need to know, like, and when you know your blood type, you they'll tell you what foods and foods you're not supposed to have if, if if you're eligible to be vegetarian. Because... Some blood type need, like, really, really heavy protein because your blood is, like, really acidic. Oh. Yeah, so, like, a lot of people don't know that. So, like, they're just like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going um, vegan because meat is not good for people or, you know. And it's just like, okay, well, if you're not going to eat meat, you need to make sure that you're having super, super heavy protein. And it's it's kind of hard to get heavy pro- protein, like, out of beans and stuff sometimes unless you're just having, like, an overly large amount. See, I didn't, you learn something new every day. I swear I did not know that. Yeah, so it's like real, and it's just like, that's just like people, um, when they're doing stuff, they should educate themselves, because a lot of people just do stuff out of the cloud. Because it's a trend. Yeah. Hello. Me trying all these different damn weight loss teas. Yeah, that's what just like, sometimes you, you, you might mess yourself up. You tell me my stomach yeah. is forever. <laughs> I, I tried to eat a banana the other day, and I was like, Nope. Yeah, or just fasting, and like people don't know that your body only needs like it's like a hundred and four minerals to survive. Mm-hmm. So let's just say like you fast, and so sea moss and bladder rack holds the hundred the all of the minerals that you need in your body. So let's just say like you want to go on a fast and you didn't want to eat. If you take those those um, minerals or whatever, like mm-hmm. you will be fine, and like it, you will actually be healthier. Like it'll help with um, with your brain, with your with everything, with with your hair growth, with your with your nails, with your skin, like everything. So, a lot of people don't know that. Like, oh, I'm gonna take this tea, and it's just like, did you did you look and see what? Like, cause even when people <laughs> when people eat stuff, like they don't look what's in it. You know what I'm saying? Like high fruit, high fruit, fructose corn syrup. High fr- <laughs> fructose, yeah. What you said? <laughs> like, it's not it's not good for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it just sits on your stomach, and that's and that's what causes a lot of buildup and fat too. You know, that's, that's, that's just going to sit there that, that you really can't 
um, digest. That's what this lady told me. She said, I bet half of your stomach is just sugar. Yeah. She was like, just, if you cut out sugar. Yeah, because if people don't know, and then it's like, you only supposed to have like 20 grams of sugar a day. And some juices have like 78 grams. You mm, know what I'm saying? I don't even want to think about what this yeah. pop got in it. You know? <laughs> I was like, I know it's another cluster. Look at that, y'all. So how is it being a mommy and an entrepreneur? Oh, it's so hard. Mm. It's hard. And that doesn't mean it's not doable, but it's definitely hard. Especially, I have a five. My daughter will be five next month. Go. Mm -hmm. But she's so needy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like she needs a lot of attention. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm like, um, <laughs> as I was telling you, like, I had to, like, you know, stop taking clients at one point because it's like, I don't want to. And then it's just like, she still needs that love and attention. So it's like, I don't want to be at work all day. Mm -hmm. And then I have to go home and she want to play or something. I'm just like, oh, no, I'm tired, you know, or I can't do this. I can't do that. And it's constantly like all day, every day, you mm -hmm. know, Cause then the child is being neglected. So it's like, I feel like I have to try to find a balance. Now, how is that the work? Because when you a business owner and, you know, a business owner, entrepreneur, and you're not punching the clock for somebody, you working for yourself, you are responsible to keep up for, okay, I got to make this much money to pay these bills. Exactly. Versus me, I can just, you know, look at my time yeah. sheet and then exactly. boom. Exactly, like boom. So how is that, that balance, like you said, work, home, life? Well, um, I feel like now it's better because I have a, a, a better support system. Like, I figured out, like, okay, well, this is the time I need. These are the clients I have. But I... That was like after I had established a clientele. So it's like, mm -hmm. I actually like make over again what I need for my lifestyle, you know? But at first it was just like, mm -hmm. look, look brother, you might have to help me out with the rent, <laughs> the rent this one, you know? Got you, got you. But I feel like definitely like just sitting down and just, um, just writing, writing everything down and like making a, a budget sheet and you know, and just keeping up with your finances. Because I know as a hairstylist, sometimes, like, you, you, you just make, you you know, people paying you cash, mm -hmm. and you don't know how much you would be making, and stuff like that. So I feel like definitely, like, making a budget sheet and seeing what's work for you. And then sometimes, like, I would just have to, like, hustle. Like, sometimes, like, maybe, like, I got these shoes that's $50. I might have to just sell these shoes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You got to make ends meet, too. Exactly. So, um, definitely as an entrepreneur, I feel like definitely budgeting and just seeing, like, how much you are making and seeing my, how much you need to make doing that. And um, sometimes you might have to, like, like, I sell hair, too, and I make wigs. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just like, okay, well, I didn't do that good this month. I'm going to have to... I know I'm, I was selling this wig for a hundred dollars. I might need to sell it for seventy five, and just to get that extra money real fast. Mm -hmm. So like for me, like I feel like I've always been just like a hustler. So I'm just like, okay, if I can't make ends meet, like I know I might have to just probably sell something or look Facebook market or you know just mm -hmm. like I'm always just trying to find other ways to make sure like if I don't meet my goal this week doing hair, then I have to meet it somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. Yeah. Everybody don't have that hustle mentality. Yeah, and it's like, it's, it's important. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, it's one, like, being an entrepreneur, you have to make sure you make it your goal with your clients. And then sometimes your clients don't come through. Mm. So that's when it comes through. Like, I didn't used to charge a deposit. But now it's just like, I have to enforce that. Because, it's like, you, you booked for a $200 service that's going to take me five hours. And so I booked you for that, and now you're not showing up. And I could have booked somebody else for that. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now you're wasting my time, and I don't have the money for it when I could have had somebody else right there. And that was already budgeted in. Exactly. That was already budgeted in. Got you. Got you. So definitely, like, um, enforcing deposits um, and just being consistent, building a relationship and with your clients and... Making you just gotta you gotta make them need you though like you know what I'm saying like you gotta be like okay you gotta come back every two weeks you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like you need this treatment you gotta enforce that's why I, that's why I enforce my um, telling people like you have to take care of your hair you you need to get your hair deep deep conditioned every two weeks you need to make sure you getting this oil that I'm selling mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and just 
And just being consistent with that because sometimes it could just be like all over the place. Like, oh, well, this person, they come once every moon. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like. <laughs> I had a hairstylist tell me that she hate income tax time. Because that's when she boom. But then that's when everybody feel like you owe them something. Like, mm -hmm. you got to do my hair because now I got the money. Exactly. But then she won't see him again until the next income exactly. tax time. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why I'm really big on, like, just having a good relationship with your clients, too. Because it's like, you don't want them to just come around every good moment or when they get their taxes. Like, mm -hmm. you want to make sure. Okay, and I work with my clients sometimes. Like, okay, you need your hair done today, but you, you're not getting paid until Tuesday. You can just tell me on Tuesday. I'll still do your hair. And, okay, and so I, you have yeah. that trust. Yeah, and then if you break that trust, that's on you because you just, you know. She needs you again. Exactly. You're going to need me again, <laughs> so look, don't touch me. That's all right. Let's see, I'm going to get you one more question, <laughs> and then we'll get up out of here. What do Pinky think about dating? Mm. Dating and being an entrepreneur. Dating and being an entrepreneur can be really hard because you can really lose yourself. You can lose yourself and and lose all your clients too. <laughs> but I feel like you should definitely like when you're dating, taking it slow and getting to know the person that you're dealing, dating with, and making sure they're they're supportive and they're for you because some people are for themselves and they'll trick you, especially if you don't know who they are and you're thinking like, oh, this person loved me and because. It'll, it'll have you stressed out sometimes. It'll have mm. you going through different emotions. But if that Losing person, really, okay. if that person really care about you, they're going to make sure, oh, no, you need to get up. You need to go to work. Like, you know, I'm going to make sure this is right before, you know, I, I'm, I'm still here to support you and your business. Mm. You know? Be a get, partner. I'm, I'm your partner. So I'm not going to let you miss out on what you got going because I, because I did something to you or I'm, I'm having you going through these emotions. So I definitely feel like you should... Get to know who you dated first, take it slow, and control your emotions. Learn how to control your emotions because it can really take a toll on you. You can lose yourself, and and then after that, it's going to be like they're going to go on with their life, and you still got to you, you gotta rebuild pick up yourself. The pieces. You got to pick up the pieces, mm -hmm. and that takes time. So just definitely like taking it slow and making sure your partner is supportive of you, your business because that's what the real part is. They're gonna support you. They're gonna make sure you're not losing yourself. They're gonna make sure, oh look, we gotta make this money. I no, you need to go. You need to go to work. You need to you need to be on your P's and Q's and cause you don't I'm telling you, like relationship will have you somewhere else. I heard that. Well thank you girl. Thank you. I'm so glad. I'm glad we got the break bread. Yes, I'm so glad. I had a good time. The food was good. Good vibes. Yes, I'm all about good vibes. Good, definitely good vibes. We should always have good energy around you. Yes. That's a good, that's a I'm big, learning that. That's a big part of being an entrepreneur too because I'm telling you, you have a bad energy. You be, be mad walking around here mad at everybody else, ready to beat everybody up. Yep. <laughs> now that's, <laughs> that's true. Right. So how you going to prosper from that? Because you're trying to, you know, watching your energy, connecting, you know, Staying connected to God. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. No Thank problem. Thank you for adding value to the show and just dropping your gems. I am so excited for your new launch. Everything is coming. In, yes, I'm so excited. Month. Like, I really have a lot that's coming up. Um, definitely follow me. And we're going to drop all that down. In the yes, we're going to drop it. And I'm so thankful for all of the viewers and who watch Oh, shout out to the hood Uber, Miss Brittany Philos, for getting our food for us. That was amazing. That saved me a whole lot of time. And shout out to Greg Black for letting us use his amazing barbershop. We love y'all. Peace. Peace.